so hello to everybody who came here to listen about extreme monetary and organizational and transparency in the NGO sector. My name is Theodosis Janos. I have a master's in engineering management, and I am also the founder and president of the IDEA Nonprofit Union. Our vision and idea is to test and implement intellectual participating democracy in a small scale, that means within our organization. But I will not go too much into our vision in this presentation. I will focus on what we have already accomplished in IDEA, and that is our extreme transparency model. So, are you ready for extreme transparency? And for us, this is the big question. Now, why do you need transparency? When I'm talking about this, is like uh, talking about something that is so straightforward. Let's say, like, why do you need to eat? But in today's society, it seems that it is so important and needed to talk about transparency. So, why do you need transparency? What is the idea of extreme transparency model and how it works? And who can use it? Well, without transparency, there can be no meritocracy. As I said in the beginning, our vision is for IDEA to be governed with, and with intellectual participating democracy. In order to create an intellectual democracy, meaning that people earn their voting rights, it is necessary to first establish a procedural meritocracy in order for someone to know what they have to do to earn this vote. Well, the first step to creating a procedure of meritocracy is to establish procedures that allow for extreme transparency within the organization. That means that we all have access to any information regarding the organization. Without transparency, we have seen many problems arise, like people having no trust in the NGOs. NGOs act as the bridging gap between government and the people. Their role is to help in cases that the government is unable to help. So without trust in NGOs, and we have numerous examples of corruption in NGOs, unfortunately, this notion exists that people should not trust NGOs. When a citizen is working all day, they pay their taxes, including solidarity taxes, that should make them feel as if they're doing their part in society in giving back and helping. But when the taxpayers' money go to NGOs through government funding and then they are misused, this leads for the citizens to become disappointed and unmotivated to participate in their communities. But of course, the misuse of taxes is not evident only when it comes to NGO funding. The lack of transparency we have has allowed politicians and their accomplices to steal money for years on end with various schemes, resulting in the recessions and extreme taxation of today. So I guess it is evident that we need more transparency procedures in our communities in all sectors. In today's time, there is still a lot of darkness due to the lack of the shining light of transparency. But from where to start tackling such a problem? How do you introduce transparency procedures that can be verified by anybody? Well, we did it, but in a very small scale. We would say that it is so obvious that we should start in the NGO sector. Because an NGO operates as a company and is funded by the people, either privately or through taxation, it should be obliged to implement extreme transparency procedures. It should be obliged to prove to its funders the use of their donations. Also, an NGO should not have any trade secrets to protect, like a for-profit company. Our initial goal in IDEA when we were established in 2009, was to test an innovative transparency method we invented at the time, because we wanted to prove that an NGO can operate with proven transparency. So we realized that you need trust and not money, and this is why we created transparency as a quality standard. So what did we achieve with zero initial funding with our only tool, the trust that transparency creates? We managed to help 25,000 people. We did more than 500 community projects, projects like providing food to homeless people, providing clothes to people in need, providing food to schools, monthly supporting families with their basic needs, many environmental actions, and many, many other unique types of actions. In order to implement all these actions, we engaged more than 1,000 volunteers. One of our main aims in IDEA is to train people on how to implement community actions, to be trained into, into active citizenship, to be trained into managers. And the beauty of transparency is that when you have everything online and in common view, any discussion, 
any detail, whether monetary or organizational, then people gradually start to trust strangers. And then we have the beauty of strangers helping strangers. And of course, slowly, people are not strangers anymore when they act together towards a common goal. So this is what we achieved with zero initial funding. And we achieved it because we created trust by implementing the idea transparency method. It is divided into two categories, monetary transparency and organizational transparency. Monetary transparency means every euro accounted for. And we're actually speaking very literally when we say every euro accounted for, and I will show you what I mean. Well, the first step is the common view of the organization's e-banking accounts. The second step is to show how transparency helps in the creation of managers. What we call entry-level transparency in IDEA is to upload your bank accounts online once a month. This is what we have been doing in IDEA since the opening of our bank accounts. And if you go now online to idea.org.gr, in our transparency section, you will find all the print screens of our bank accounts since the beginning of our time. Of course, we urge these believers to print out what we post online, come to our meetings, and then we verify by going live into our e-banking accounts and show that what we post online is actually the same as the database of the bank. So this is uh, the, the entry level of transparency. If someone wants to, extreme, to go to extreme monetary transparency, it should all join voices of, for every purchase that was made for any material. This is what we're doing in IDEA. Also, they should have inverse auctions for any material needed. So what we do when we need to purchase something for an action is that we give enough time for people to propose alternative suppliers to what we need to buy so that we can never be accused of getting money under the table because we buy from a certain supplier. So, I mentioned earlier that transparency creates managers. Henry Fayol was a believer that managers are not only bored, but can also be created. But to create managers, you need systemic procedures. And from our experience with these systemic procedures, when they are also totally transparent and inclusive, we've seen people transform from shy volunteers to managing their own team. No. I will talk about the procedures of IDEA, which are designed as an abstract open system that allows for perpetual improvement from the feedback of our stakeholders, whether they are our volunteers or the people we help or our donors. I will use as a case study an action that we have implemented 200 times, which is called Food for All by Night. First of all, we have the IDEA Transparency Guide inside of which we explain very clearly what our goals are, why we insist on transparency, who can organize actions, the limitations of our actions. So this is like our constitution of idea. We have everything very clearly written down because when you have things clearly and easily written down, then you avoid misunderstandings. This is the first thing a person willing to organize an action needs to read. So let's go now and see how the procedures of our organizational transparency based on the case study put for all by night work. We started this action towards the end of 2009, beginning of 2010, when the first recession hit Greece. And at the moment, we had around 20,000 homeless people in Athens. So what we did was we started cooking food in our homes, gathering it at a certain place, putting it in bags, the food, a napkin, a fork, bread, water, sweet. So this was the idea of food bag. And we were walking around in Athens initially in order to find where homeless people are. So if one wanted to organize an action and become an ideatis, first of all, they have to fill the action proposal form in, or, in order to create an action. So the action proposal form is a very easy form that we created. All the forms are in Greek because we've been using them in Greek. So for every idea action, we have a unique code, which we need for transparency reasons. We have the name of the organizer, which we call the ideatis. What is the purpose of the action? What is the methodology? What are the necessary materials needed? And how the action will be implemented? So the new ideatis fills in this form, always guided by a more experienced ideatis when necessary. 
until they become experienced themselves. This is the action safety form. I chose this case study because this is a very sensitive and complicated action regarding the managerial part. That is because, apart from the fact that it has to manage many volunteers, it consists of a very small part of the action, because each donor can give as little as five portions of cooked food or even 10 bottles of water. We have another managerial obstacle due to our total inclusivity. Because anybody is welcome to participate in our actions, so long as they follow our procedures, it so happens that many different people that have never seen each other before need to cooperate. Furthermore, this action is extra, extra sensitive because the people that we're helping, due to the fact that they are living on the streets, can be psychologically in a bad state. They can be drunk and even intoxicated with heavy drugs like heroin. So this action needs a very strict safety procedure. This document is right at the beginning of the action and it has very clear instructions of what not to do. For example, when yeah. you're handing over an idea food bag to a person who is a heroin addict, always be aware of your giving hand. Of course, you're wearing gloves, but still you need to be aware. One time, this is a personal experience, when I was giving a food bag to a person that uses heroin, only to see in the last minute that the person taking the bag was holding with the same hand as I reached that would pinch me if I wasn't careful. There are many things like this, but I will not go into a lot of detail. I just want to show you how our procedures work. So we have the action safety form, and then we have the action transparency form. In this form, you can see exactly who did what regarding the action. And this is shown in detail, in extreme and beautiful detail. And this is why we call it an extreme transparency model. Because in idea, you know exactly how many portions of food someone gave, what kind of food it was, who gave the little aluminum plates we use, how many of them, who gave water, who gave forks, who did what, who moved stuff to bring them to the action, how many people helped in packaging the bags, in this case 11, how many cards were used, who did necessary supplementary tasks before the action took place, who took videos and pictures. And this is not for one project. We've done this for all our projects. This is how we operate, and we create forms like this, of course, for any action and any new action we are creating. So this is how the idea extreme transparency method operates. Now again, the question comes to, are you ready for extreme transparency? I talked in the beginning, and I told you why it is so important to enhance transparency. I mean, we all know from personal experience that the quality of any human relationship is directly proportional to the amount of honesty that exists within this relationship. The more transparency in the relationship, the better its quality. If you have a friend and you're totally honest with them, because transparency is honesty in the end, you have a good friendship. When you're working with someone and you're honest with them, you have trust and a good collaboration without so much stress. So if you're... Oh, so... Uh, I think someone opened the microphone. It's me. So, if you are ready for extreme transparency, if you can close it, please. So, if you are ready for extreme transparency and you are a citizen, and the next time you want to donate something to an NGO, you should demand extreme transparency from them. And if they tell you that they don't know how to do it, then tell them that you know there is a way how to do it. And tell them that the people who are already doing it will be very happy to help you implement it. This is what you want. So as citizens, who we are donors or volunteers, we should demand extreme transparency. Now, if we are uh, NGOs, there are only benefits that we can enjoy when we actually have transparency. First of all, we are in this beautiful position to totally prove to our donors how their donations were used. We exist and function due to our donations. It's the least we can do for our donors to prove to them without a doubt that their donation was used as they wished. Because when the funder knows exactly how their donation was used, then the funder is happy to donate again and the funder feels like an active citizen. 
And by feeling as an active citizen, this person is in general and has a more positive attitude towards their whole life. So if you are an NGO, there are only benefits for applying such a procedure. And as I said, we're always having an idea to help any NGO in implementing transparency. The only case that an NGO will not benefit from extreme transparency is when they don't want to have transparency for their own reasons. Keep in mind that for an NGO to enter the entry level of transparency, which is just uploading their bank accounts once a month, this takes five minutes of your time. Now, if you are a company that has a CSR department, a corporate social responsibility department, and you're aiding other NGOs through that CSR department, then again, you should demand transparency from the NGOs you're supporting. If you organize your own actions as a CSR department, then again, how wonderful would it be if you could prove to the people in an era of disbelief that your company really cares, not only for the cause that it helps, but also for enhancing transparency as a whole in our society. So I talked about citizens, I talked about the NGOs, I talked about companies, which is almost all the world. So to conclude in this presentation, I will state that the question is not whether we need to enhance transparency right now in our world, in all sectors, but the question is, are we ready for extreme transparency? If you are ready, Info at idea.orgr is the email to contact us. If you want to work together, join forces. We are always open for collaborations. I want to thank everybody for your attention. I hope this talk was helpful to you. And uh, if we have questions, uh, I will be happy to answer them. Ένα ευχαριστήσω τον κύριο Τζάνο. Είμαι πραγματικά εντυπωσιασμένο από το από την παρουσίασή του. Θα αφήσουμε όμω τι ερωτήσει για το τέλο για να μπορέσουμε να πάμε στην επόμενη παρουσίαση, παρότι ήταν yeah, πολύ yeah. Ενδιαφέρουσα, ενδιαφέρον το θέμα και σας συγχαίρω για την πρωτοβουλία σας, ε, καθότι έχω μια πολύ μικρή επαφή με τον κόσμο των, των ε, κοινωνικών επιχειρήσεων και των επιχειρήσεων για, τις, ε, ε, για την βοήθεια των ανθρώπων. Να είστε καλά και θα, yeah, περάσω, yeah. Στην κυρία, ε, θα περάσω στην κυρία...